Hi, this is Dan here. I hope you're doing well today. In this lesson, I'm going to take you through three pentatonic shapes that I use all the time. We may as well start off with what I was playing in the intro, which was a minor pentatonic shape. Here it is, and this is how it goes. Now those circles are the flat fives within that scale, and that kind of turns it into a, into a blues scale. So it's technically not a pentatonic scale, but I just had to include it because it's just so useful. It sounds like this. Even just playing it up and then down just to practice it, get the fingers coordinated, even just doing that sounds really good. Just ignore the circles, those flat fives for a minute and just learn this pattern. Just from the G all the way up. So it's fingers one, four on the E string and then fingers one, three, one, three, one, three. That's one way to learn the pattern. Often at the top, by the way. I'll just go two frets higher than that. And I'll do that a lot as well. So one thing I was doing, we're in the key of G minor. And that means that the notes that are on G, C, and D, or the chords rather formed from those, are minor. If you play those notes all on the E string, so here's the G on the third fret of the E string, and then frets eight and 10 are the C and the D respectively. If you do that, that's a good way to practice using this pattern moving to different places, something like this. G minor then, that's C minor, so all I did there was just a something around G minor, keeping it quite slow. Then shift quickly up to the C on the 8th fret of the E, use exactly the same shape. Then to the D minor. Now that shape with the flat fives, because we're in the key of G minor, when you're on the G you can use that shape, the sort of slightly bigger. Yeah, that blue scale sounds really, really good. Let's move on to the next shape, and we'll do one on the A string. So this is now a major pentatonic shape. So obviously the minor one works over any minor chord that happens to be on the E string. That entire shape will work. I do that a lot. And this is an A string rooted major pentatonic shape. Here's how it goes. I'll start on the B flat. Here it is. Again, we've got the little circles to denote the, the major blues. If you put those in, it sounds really good. That would be a good way to practice it, by the way. Start on the root and just go down or up. It doesn't really matter. There's that passing blues note. Use some different techniques. So here is the hammer on. Here's a slide. That blues note sounds particularly good when you pull off from it to a lower sounding note. So the third fret A string. Or hammer on from the blues note to the fifth fret. And that kind of thing just to add expression into your playing. And that comes from hammer-ons, slides, pull-offs, vibratos, really good. It does sound really bluesy, doesn't it? So what we have here, and this is probably one of the reasons that I use it a lot, is we have the root note on the A string. So those two notes, in this case, the G and the F on the third and first fret of the E string, that is, that's your major six right there. 
and then your perfect fifth or just fifth. That's used a lot in soul, you know, this kind of thing. All that kind of thing. So now let's practice going to different chords. So we're in the key of G minor and B flat major, they're related. It means that they have exactly the same notes, which means that anything I'm teaching you in this lesson, exact chord progressions can be practiced together. So we're keeping the shape on the same string, so the A string, and what we can do is we can go to the other major chords within this key of B flat major, which is basically the B flat, the E flat, and the F. So frets one on the A string is the B flat. Then we've got E flat on fret six, two frets higher on fret eight, we've got the F. So let me do this slowly. Every single one of those root notes, you can play the same pattern without the, let's just ignore the circles, for, um, the, the blues notes for now. This is the final chord, the F. Couple of things to notice here. I morphed into going from playing a scale up and down to making some music, and I do urge you to do that as soon as you can. Obviously, that, there's a technical aspect to that because your technique's got to be good enough and your rhythms have got to be good enough to do that just on the fly, but that's a good thing to practice. I was playing with a drum beat before. In fact, let me kick that in just to demonstrate how I might practice this because yes, I do like to do exactly what I just showed you, but I also like to do this. You know, you really get to practice timing and technique and, and all those things together when you have a drum beat. That was 120 beats per minute. That's quite fast. So ignore that. Just do it without a drum beat. And then when you really want to get your timing together, bring it in. But all I was doing was just some notes from that pattern. You don't have to use all of them. Also know the intervals within there. That five and six up the octave is there. You, you fall back on things that you know. And really, I've studied soul, Motown, R&B so much so that I can, I know these patterns. By the way, I've got a book and a course on R&B, soul and Motown. I'll put a link below if you're interested. Um, just a quick word on what fingers to use when playing these. I don't really have a very strict sort of answer as to what you would use. If we just concentrate on the B flat major pentatonic, There I was just using the first and the third, but if I was doing stuff like this, sliding, so B flat, C, D, frets one, three, and five on the A string, then I definitely would use my first finger to third finger, because I could use that same third finger to slide, bringing me into position to play the notes on the next string. And that just makes sense to me I wouldn't be thinking this as when I'm playing. I, I guess I practice that to then not have to think about it. But you could use a little finger. I suppose you could do that. A little bit of extended fingering here. So I'm on the E flat now. You could use fingers one, two, and four. A little bit of a stretch there for the first finger. You probably would reserve that sort of fingering for when you put your second finger on the E flat, which is a, you know, standard. I guess that would be the way you would be taught a one octave major pentatonic, you know, to start with. But I like this pattern. 
you know, these notes that are higher up could be used in fills or to embellish a line a little bit more. Anyway, look, I'm just gonna go to the third and final pattern now, which is very similar to that one, but instead of being on the A string, it's on the E string, so B flat here. I love that shape, I use it all the time. If you were to add in those blues notes. It just sounds really, really good. And just yet yeah, a way to practice that would be just to learn the shape, make sure that you understand what the intervals are within it. That's the root note, that's the octave. You could think about it as one pattern like this. So that's the root, the second, the third, the fifth, and the sixth. And then that pattern just repeats itself again up the octave. You know, I, I guess I'm playing in a little bit of a of a soul R&B Motown way, but let's go back to the first shape and let's uh, let's go to a different style. Let's think about rock here. That's just the shape, and I was actually only going to the first octave there. That's literally the same shape. I put some of the blues notes in there. But that's literally the same shape, just starting on the next G on the E string, which is frets, fret 15. Okay, so that's another way to practice. You can just do a little call and response type thing. The aim here is to learn the shape, to learn the sound of it. So away from your bass, you could just sing the notes of this to really get it home. Learn the fingering pattern. And use it to get your technique up to speed. So you can use finger style, you can use slap actually. lots of different things. But those are three shapes. I use them absolutely all, all the time. I'm going to put a link below to a PDF with all those shapes and a couple of the things that you can practice with those chord progressions. And I just really think you're going to get a lot of mileage from that. So do use it in practice and in actual music. You'll also hear this in bass lines that you want to practice, that you want to learn. You'll hear them. So if you do have any questions, do let me know, leave them below. Thanks very much for taking the time to watch this and I will see you on the next video.